and it can do so many things and actually help you so much in advancing with your music production that I would recommend it to any producer to just have it, have it always on the end of your chain. Hey guys, welcome to the vlog. I'm all done with the boring business stuff that I have to take here on Mondays. It's it's always a lot and it's always sucking out all of the energy of me. But I haven't done a tutorial in a while, so I thought about making one today that is all about analyzers. I already made basic tutorials about how to EQ, how to compress, how to use the limiter. And I think one of the very important tools is the analyzer. It's not used by a lot of people and a lot of people think it's nonsense to use it because you should use your ears. And that's 100% true. You should trust your ears more than the analyzer. But at the very beginning, it can help you a lot. And even if you're producing already for a couple of years, it will still help you to find mistakes or help you to adjust. If you're doing a mixing session for four hours, your ears get tired and, and you hear certain frequencies just wrong because you've listened for so long to it with the analyzer you can fix and minimize these kind of things. For basically every single track I ever produced, I have at the very end the span analyzer. It's by a company called Voxengo. Voxengo is the company, they do a bunch of free plugins that are good. The analyzer by far their best, it's totally for free and it can do so many things and actually help you so much in advancing with your music production that I would recommend it to any producer to just have it, have it always on the end of your chain and I sometimes have it open 90% of the time where I'm mixing stuff just to be able with a glimpse to look at it and, and see if there is any mistake that I might not be able to hear. It works in the easiest way possible. Whenever audio is running through it, you can see the audio, you can see the frequencies. Let me, for example, just solo the, the kick. So you basically see the kick when you go in there with your mouse, it shows you at the top 43 hertz and it's F1. So you can see the hertz and also the, the note of the fundamental of the kick and you know basically what pitch the kick has. That is one thing where I use it a lot if I wanna find out the key of certain things that do not have that much tone to it, so percussions and, and kicks. I just use the analyzer. It's way faster, way more accurate than me trying to figure it out by playing notes next to it and kind of hearing the fundamental note. It also gives you a good sense for frequencies and music because when you're producing, it's basically stacking frequencies on top of each other, making sure they don't overlap or don't clash and using all of the frequencies wisely. So the kick at the very bottom, the hi-hats at the very top, the vocals in the middle and guitar and vocals already gets tough. So for example, if I just solo now the vocals in this song, those are the, the vocals, the frequency of the vocal. And now at the same time, we have chords going on. Main synthesizer. Both at the same time. So you can see already and also here they're overlapping. And then it's about getting them separated, either by spreading, for example, the synthesizer sounds to the sides and have more room in the middle for the vocals. But an analyzer can actually help you to see these kind of things. And what I also really love about an analyzer is like the overall tonal balance. So you just listen to the entire track. Yeah, apparently my computer can't handle the workload of playing this entire song with the analyzer opened and recording the internal sound and also capturing the, the screen for you. So I had to get, again, unfortunately, um, some ice for my laptop. It helps a little. The fans are cooled down now. So quick tip on the side, if you have overheating problems, just put an ice pack underneath and I think the computer should be now ready to go again. Yeah, it really does help. So back to the track, you can see now in the analyzer, the overall balance is kind of all right. For electronic music, I would always go for having the very low frequencies and the very top frequencies almost being equal. And in between, it depends. If you do a techno track, a tech house track, something that is more underground, you usually go for U-shapes, so less mid frequencies. If you go for more poppy, vocal heavy, cheerful, summerish kind of vibe song, it's 
either flat or a little bell shape depending on the vocals and type of music you're going for but maybe just take your 10 or 5 favorite songs drag them into logic and look at them while watching the analyzer this way you learn how music looks like and this will in return help you again to read the analyzer to improve your song if you're not like trained enough with your ears maybe your speakers are not the best maybe the room you're sitting in is not the best an analyzer is always like an additional help don't take it as your only source definitely use your ears 90 percent of the time and maybe in 10 percent of the cases the analyzer will give you information your ears just can't then also the analyzer gives you more information than just the frequencies you also have like the output gain it shows you if it clips it shows you how loud it is it shows you the RMS value, which is the, the loudness uh, on average over a certain amount of time, which is really helpful to see how loud a track actually is. You got the peaks that will be shown here, the max crash factor and the amount of clipping here zero because there is a limiter right in front of it. And then there is the correlation meter. It will show you how wide the song is. One means mono. So for example, if I just solo the kick, it will be at 1. If I unsolo it and let the entire track play, it will be between 0 and 1, which is good because it means it's, it's stereo, it's wide, but not too wide. You can also listen to single elements, for example, just the main chords. It goes almost to 0, so it's as wide as it gets. If it goes into the anti-phase, you might get into troubles if you then listen to the track again in mono those um, parts cancel out each other and you might not be able to hear it. So be careful with going into anti-phase. There is a lot more to this analyzer. You can also hold. This means just that it freezes the frequency so you can look at them even closer. You could also choose here in routing um, mid-side stereo. So it will show you in another graph the frequencies that are more to the side. And in the other graph, just the stuff that is mono. This is quite handy. For example, if you have a certain element sitting in, in the middle part of the frequencies above the kick and you don't want them to clash, you can switch it and maybe use an EQ. The Logic EQ has this mid-side function and just EQ out the mid-signal or just a stereo signal to not only separate them on, on one um, layer, also on the second layer of mid and side. This EQing technique can be quite helpful. So definitely, if you have no analyzer yet, go and get one. Try to implement it into your working flow. This will definitely prevent you from some of the beginners, absolute beginner mistakes. For example, having the bass way too loud or the vocals way too loud. You will immediately see it and then just try to lower it so it looks good on the analyzer and listen again to it and then decide if it's better like you heard it previously or the analyzer and over the years you will get so good that the analyzer will actually do the mistake but at the very beginning i think looking at it can help you a ton i hear so many uh, track submits usually where the overall balance is just so wrong it's usually way too little bottom end or way too much and it can both ways just destroy your entire mix so fixing those obvious mistakes that you won't be aware of as a beginner is easily done with an analyzer. And before ending this analyzer topic, of course, my, my biggest warning, don't mix by looking. Use it to look at it, think about it. If the analyzer is right, change it, listen to it again. But the last call should be always your ears, 100%. Please, please, please don't start mixing with an analyzer without actually hearing and listening to it. It will just ruin every single mix of yours. It's almost as worse as using the pink noise stupid technique. Just use your ears and if you're not trained enough, use the analyzer as a help. But please, no more than that. Just like someone that gives you advice and then you think about it and you decide for yourself if is it right or wrong because you're the artist, you're the one deciding it's your last call to pick whatever you feel is right. Is it you or is it me? All done with work, all done with producing. I got now here DJ Fun Essa in the house. Hello. Hello. She's world famous. We have to get her back on top of the DJ Mac top 100 list. So I'm ghost producing her album. You want to make it future bass or trance? Future bass. 
sure future base is a little out at the moment so trans has a oh, okay future base or oh, future bounce never heard about future bounce i will take care of it that's why i'm the ghost producer so if you want to find out more about how i ghost produce her entire album in one day tune in tomorrow that's it for today sign up <laughs>